Welcome to the 2018-19 Lake Simcoe Ice Fishing Forecast, brought to you by Fenwick, 60 years of quality and innovation. Clam Outdoors, bring it on, and Aquaview, stop guessing and start watching. As the open water season for 2018 comes to a close, we leave behind the second hottest summer on record since 2008. So what does an extremely hot summer and much higher than average water temperatures mean for our winter? It's interesting to listen to the long-term forecast by the experts. Farmer's Almanac is predicting a bitter winter across the country, whereas Environment Canada says El Nino, so maybe warmer than average. It doesn't instill a lot of confidence, so you might want to wait for a closer-term forecast. The long hot summer made for exceptional shallow open water fishing this year. This year's fry can fatten up in the extended season, so less winter kill. So as we change species from warm water to cold water and get ready for ice, what can we expect this year? Whitefish were plentiful last year. Perfect ice allowed for extreme angling pressure last year for whitefish, but stocking by the Ministry of Natural Resources along with natural recruitment seems to have left the population in pretty good shape. Whitefish were well distributed around the lake, with even some of the traditional deep spots coming back to life. There seems to be a resurgence of smelt, and that might have something to do with catching fish deeper in traditional areas. Lake herring or cisco have also made a comeback. Add to this a healthy supply of goby, which may spawn up to six times in an extended summer. All of this indicates a pretty rich food web right now. Given the right ice conditions and lake access, I expect that we're going to see excellent whitefish fishing again this year. Lake Simcoe is becoming more of a trophy lake for lake trout rather than a numbers fishery. For many years, the Ministry of Natural Resources stocked over 100,000 lake trout, but in 2010 that changed. From approximately 2006 to 2010, there were a lot of smaller natural fish being caught. For at least two decades leading up to the year 2000, there was little or no natural recruitment of lake trout. Everything was stocked. This changed somewhere around the turn of the century. There was actually evidence that some fish were reproducing. By 2006 to 2007, there was ample evidence that there was a boom in natural recruitment from 2003 to 2005. With this new data, under the Fish Community Objectives for Lake Simcoe set out in 2010, in an effort to support natural reproduction, the ministry reduced stocking of lake trout from 100,000 to 50,000. By 2017, there was evidence that the reproduction rates from 2003 to 2005 did not continue. Even the water quality in terms of dissolved oxygen, phosphorus loading, and other elements all maintain healthy levels. Natural recruitment decreased dramatically. Using the fish community objectives as guideline, the ministry will now have to decide whether to increase stocking back to its previous levels. But until this happens, we have an aging lake trout population, so fewer fish, but larger fish. Large lake trout from Lake Simcoe are not very good table fare, so the catch and release ratio is actually fairly high. But with good ice and access to the trout grounds, without natural recruitment or increase in stocking, it's only a matter of time before we deplete the population to the point of a very difficult rehabilitation. Given the trends of the last few years, I expect it to be a little tougher through the ice this winter for lake trout. Regardless of the ice conditions in the main lake, perch are always accessible. After all, it is the number one targeted species on the lake. Jumbo perch, which is what most anglers are looking for, have seasonal migration spending most of their summer out in deeper water. They'll move back into the shallows once the ice is formed and stay there for the winter. In recent years, this has changed. Like so many other species, perch have grown up on a diet of goby. Whereas goby are a threat to other species because they're prolific bed raiders, not so much with perch. There's no win-win situation here. It's all one way. Perch eat goby and are growing faster because of it. It's a one-sided food chain. Fish over 14 inches are becoming much more common, and there's even 15 and 16 inch fish in the lake. 
And if Gobi wasn't enough to keep the population fed, the lake is full of shiners. So with a very healthy food web, accelerated growth rates, I expect it to be an exceptional year for perch fishing in Lake Simcoe. So my forecast is, if we get good ice, we're going to have very good whitefish fishing this year, an off year for trout, and exceptional perch fishing. Good luck out there and stay safe.